locations, two surgery centers, one in Germantown and one in South Haven. And our Germantown surgery center was rated a top ASC by Newsweek. We have Saturday clinic hours at our Bartlett location and we have urgent care hours at our East Memphis location. We also have a 24-7 urgent care line called Orthostat. Now a little bit about tonight's speaker. Dr. Wadowski is a board certified fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon specializing in hip and knee disorders. He focuses on primarily hip and knee replacement as well as revision hip and knee replacement. In his spare time, Dr. Wadowski enjoys spending time with his family and participates in outdoor recreational activities such as skiing, ice hockey, running, and golf. And he also dabbles in music a little bit. So without further ado, take it away, Dr. Wadowski. Well, good evening, and thanks again, Savannah, for setting all this up. Uh, my name is Drew Wadowski, and I'm here to talk to you today about robotic or computer-assisted knee replacement. Knee replacement has come a long way in even the last five or ten years. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how technology has been used to uh, create pretty significant advances in knee replacement. So knee replacement is one of the most successful surgical procedures of all time. It's come a long way over the last 30 or 40 years, and we used to do these in a hospital where we'd keep people for 10 or 10 days or two weeks. It's decreased then to five or seven days, and now people stay overnight, and even now we're doing it same day at the surgery center. The most common reason to have knee replacement is osteoarthritis. You can see in this picture down here what a before and after of a knee replacement looks like. The before picture shows damaged cartilage, joint deformity, and inflammation, swelling. The after picture shows a knee replacement with the thigh bone piece, the shin bone piece, and the plastic in the middle. The thigh bone piece and the shin bone piece are metal. The plastic in the middle serves as kind of the joint surface. Uh, we tell people it's a recapping procedure. A lot of people are under the assumption that a knee replacement is cutting your leg off and sewing it back on. That's not true at all. It's just recapping the ends of the bone where the arthritis is. What is osteoarthritis? Many people come to me in clinic and say, my knee's worn out, I think I have osteoarthritis. Well, they're one and the same thing. Osteoarthritis is when the bone and the joint has worn out. It's a degenerative disease and the cartilage breaks down, the joint forms bone spurs, the ends of the bones get exposed, and it can become bone on bone, which is extremely painful. 45% of people will develop arthritis at some time in their life, although I think that number is probably underreported. Most people will get some form of arthritis, mild or greater. The main symptom of arthritis is pain. You may feel it at movement or even at rest when it gets severe. You'll have some stiffness and swelling, and you may even get loss of range of motion in the joint, which is inability to fully extend or flex the knee up underneath you. The symptoms may get in the way of your normal everyday activities, such as in hip arthritis, people have trouble putting their shoes and socks on and bending forward. In knee arthritis, people have trouble walking, and they may develop a deformity of the joint, such as a knock knee or a bow-legged deformity. There are many classification systems for arthritis, but the only one you need to look at is this one right here, early, mid, and late, or mild, moderate, or severe. In mild arthritis, you may have a little bit of cartilage wear out, but there's really no deformity and no uh, bone spurs. In moderate arthritis, there's some bone spurs, the cartilage starts to become exposed and the joint may become deformed. And then in severe arthritis, you get a lot of bone spurs, exposed cartilage, exposed ends of bones. You may even have a big joint deformity, such as a big bow-legged deformity or a knock knee deformity. The arthritis may become so bad where it becomes uh, bone on bone, which again is quite painful. So as we discussed earlier, a knee replacement is for those who have severe arthritis. Again, as a reminder, a picture of a knee replacement is in the bottom left corner of your screen. You can see we use metal caps on the bottom part of the thigh bone and the top part of the shin bone to replace the joint, get rid of the arthritis, and correct the deformity. Between those metal pieces is a plastic piece that, again, acts as the joint gliding surface. Traditionally, knee replacement has been done kind of as a guesstimate. We use intraoperative landmarks that everybody has as a guide as to where to put the components. It's a one size fits most approach and it works really, really well. It's worked since it was first done in the late 60s and it even works today in the same way. Most people have been doing it the same way for 20 or 30 years. Here is an example of what some knee replacement components look like on the bottom left and then the top middle, an example of x-rays after a knee replacement. You can see the gentleman on the top right there is very happy with his knee replacement. But as we move on and technology and medicine improves, 
I subscribe to the old adage that the same old thinking gives the same old results and we need to continue to get better. We need to continue to adapt and use technology to improve our outcomes and improve our patients' lives. So what is the main issue? Why do we need to get better? Well, there is a relatively high rate of dissatisfaction reported after knee replacement. 20% of people can report some level of dysfunction after their knee replacement. Pain, a little bit of stiffness, swelling from time to time. Those are all common after knee replacement sometimes, and they can really get in the way of some people's lives even after knee replacement. Fortunately, this is rare, but it's my job to figure out who those 20% of people are going to be and make sure that doesn't happen. How can we improve? Can we just do a better knee replacement? It's gotten pretty advanced over the last few years, and I think right now traditional knee replacement is probably as good as it's going to get, at least for the foreseeable future. So what can we do to improve on top of that? We can use technology. I've included a few screenshots of some papers in our literature here. This is just to show that this is something that's being studied and we're starting to see a lot of literature, a lot of papers study robotic and computer assisted total knee replacement. So what are the results? For the most part, they vary. There are many studies for computer assisted knee replacement, some studies that show equal. There are really not many studies that show inferiority. The big debate is cost versus surgical time. The robot adds some cost, but will decrease surgical time in some studies. The theme overall of all the studies is that there is a decrease in outliers. By outliers, I mean that 20% of people who are dissatisfied with their knee replacement. Components are more reliably placed in a better position and outcomes are improved. Again, here's an example of a few studies that show the improvements that computer assisted knee replacement can bring. Better alignment, fewer outliers, lower reduction in revision rates, improved outcomes after your knee replacement. The technology I use is not new technology. It's been around for about 10 years and it's been well studied and uh, verified. You can see it started in 2012 with uh, their first system and we've advanced over the last decade or so to the modern system, which is the Cori system that we are using today. A few benefits of the Cori system in particular show that there's no requirement for any preoperative imaging besides really an x-ray. There's no CT scan. It's portable, meaning we can move it between facilities and operating rooms. And then it's compatible with the whole Smith & Nephew line of knee replacements from partial knee replacement all the way to um, even revision knee replacement now. So the big question everyone wants to know is, is the robotic knee replacement for me? And I think the answer for most people is overwhelmingly, yes, it is. There's a few unique risks associated with it, such as uh, irritation from the pin sites uh, or fracture through the pin sites. We have to trust the computer, which is something that uh, surgeons have a tough time doing sometimes. We trust our hands, not necessarily the computer. But with the experience in the system, trusting the computer has become a lot easier and patient's personal experience. I keep hearing from my patients that return after a robotic knee replacement that the range of motion is better, there's less swelling, less pain, quicker recovery. Um, and so I like hearing that. That's ultimately what we want and that's what we want for you as well. To give you a frame of reference, this is traditionally how knee replacement is done. It's using these old antiquated instruments that kind of look archaic. They're large, they're cumbersome, they involve a lot of drilling, pins, clamps, grasps, things that are um, things that obviously don't look that accurate. Um, we have to drill holes in your bones. The robotic system eliminates very, very, uh, excuse me, eliminates a lot of these things. So compare this slide to the previous slide. This shows pretty much all you need to do the core knee replacement. You need the computer and the tower and the screen as well as the handheld um, burr and the foot pedal. Pretty much everything we do, including use of those other instruments, is taken place by this computer. I've included a few videos here to show you just kind of how we do it. Uh, there will be no blood, no surgical pictures here. This is all from the screen just from the computer, so you don't need to turn away or anything. I'm going to hit play on the video and show you. This is what we do. We first attach an array to the shin bone and then also in the thigh bone in the incision. And then using the computerized painter, we actually paint the entirety of the bottom part of your femur and top part of your tibia. 
and the computer creates this beautiful 3D model of your knee replacement. I'll let this play out here and show you. There's a few areas in the knee we have to get completely, but once it's done, you've got a real life 3D model of your knee with all the imperfections and arthritis and deformity all included in there for us to study and evaluate. After we paint and get our landmarks of both the femur and the tibia, we go ahead and move on to the planning screen where we virtually put the knee replacement in your knee. Here's a good example of what the planning screen looks like. With the planning screen, we have so many degrees of freedom where we can place the components. If you look on the bottom of the screen, we can also check how tight or loose your knee will be. One of the essential tenets of knee replacement is to get a knee that's perfectly balanced in full extension, in mid flexion, and in full flexion. With the computer, we can use these charts and these graphs to assess this, and it changes in real time based on where we put the components. So we can literally put these components anywhere we like within reason, obviously, to give us perfect balanced extension and flexion gaps, which provides a perfect knee with good range of motion and better outcomes. After we go ahead and uh, virtually create your knee replacement, we go ahead and start the bone removal part. We use the burr that you've seen in previous pictures to get rid of the bone and the femur and the tibia. And this is an example of us doing that. It's happening in real time on the patient's knee, but also in virtual time where we can see what we're doing. The colors represent the bone that needs to be removed and the white part is um, uh, when we're done, what it looks like. So you can see here, we're doing the distal femur cut, just taking the bone off the bottom end of the femur to create one of our um, four cuts as part of the femur. The burr is kind of taking away the bone and we're kind of removing it using a suction device so it doesn't get in the way. And this creates a perfect sur surface for us to keep on uh, going and do the next steps of your knee replacement. After we're done preparing the femur, we'll prepare the tibia. This video shows one of my favorite parts of the surgery is the alignment of the tibia. You may have to look a little bit closely, but this is one of the toughest parts to do in a traditional knee replacement is to get the alignment guide that goes up and down your shin bone in the perfect spot. Well, again, using the computer, that's been much improved. You'll see here when I hit play, let me bring the stylus into play and the orange line represents where we're going to do our cut. So, with the computer, as you can see there, we can get perfect position of our block to cut the tibia. Once we have it where we like, we just put it in place and make the tibial cut, and it happens just like that. It's quicker, it's faster, and it's much more accurate. And when we're done, we take your knee through a range of motion. We have trial pieces in before we put the real knee replacement in, but they're the same sizes and shape as the real knee replacement. They're just not glued in yet. We do this on every knee replacement. With the computer, we can see the range of motion that we're gonna get, and we can see the gaps, how tight or how loose it is. You can see this knee replacement when we take it through the range of motion and check the gaps, that we've got less than a millimeter of side to side range of motion and really, really good range of motion, which is what we want after a knee replacement. It's really cool to be able to do that virtually. I'm gonna play this again so you can see the knee move in virtual time as well. It's really, really, um, a huge benefit to see and have documented that we got your knee to 120, 130, 140 degrees of range of motion after your knee replacement, when previously you may have only had 90 or 100 degrees of flexion. Here's a quote from one of my patients, uh, Mr. Brooks. He says, I've had both knees replaced and I like my left knee better. Dr. Wodowski replaced my right knee in 2020 and replaced my left knee using the Cori robot in late 2021. I'm back at work now and my left knee swells less than my right and is pain free. We hear this pretty often after Cori knee replacements. It really seems to be that we are decreasing the outliers and getting more people better faster, which is what we want, which is what we want in my practice. I want this for all of Ortho South. We want this for the community of Memphis and the Mid South. Well, thanks for taking the time to listen to me this evening. Again, Savannah, thank you so much for setting all this up. Um, we're now going to have a question and answer session where Savannah will ask some questions and I'll answer them uh, as best as I can. Um, please don't hesitate to contact us or contact our office anytime. We're happy to get in touch with you. 
and uh, I'll share some contact information for us uh, at the end of the presentation. Look forward to seeing you in the office and getting you better using the uh, Corey new robot and um, let us know if you need anything. Thanks very much and uh, see you soon. All righty, thank you so much, Dr. Wadowski. I'm gonna yeah, give thanks, everyone- thanks, thanks, Savannah. I'm gonna give everyone a second to submit their questions, but I think we already have a couple, so. All right, Dr. Wadowski, someone wants to know how long does the surgery take? That's a good question. So with traditional knee replacement, it probably would take, oh, about an hour and 15 minutes or so, hour and 20 minutes from skin to skin time. That's from incision to closure. Uh, with the robot eliminating some steps, we can now do this in an hour and sometimes less than an hour. So, you know, a full day doing four or five, you say 15 minutes for surgery, that's an hour. You could do another one um, uh, uh, in that day. So uh, about an hour or so. And what is the infection rate using the Cori robot? Good question. So when we get you ready for knee replacement surgery, I bring everybody back um, to talk about the risks and benefits of surgery about a week or so before your surgery day. And one of the things we talk about is infection. Um, infection is rare and worldwide, the rate of infection after a hip or a knee replacement is about 1.4%. But that takes into account people who are fairly infirm or unhealthy, such as some people that might be on dialysis or have had a liver or a kidney transplant. And it also takes in some of the people who are healthier, who have no medical problems. So it's just an average. I tell most people that their risk of infection is about 1% or less. We see in our practice and my partner's practice less than 1% risk um, in our population in the Memphis area and in our hospitals and surgery centers. So less than 1% is uh, fair, I would think. Okay, next question. We've got a lot of questions. Um, I know people who have had the traditional knee replacement and now they limp because their legs are not the same length. Will this new pr procedure cut down on the odds of that happening? Yeah, it can definitely cut down the odds of that happening. Um, I think sometimes what happens is that everyone's left knee and their right knee are not the same. So if we're able to use the robot on both sides, uh, when we do knee replacement, if you need, if you need to, uh, yeah, we can get them back to the same length. Okay, and I'm not sure if you will be able to answer this, Dr. Wadowski, but okay. someone asked, do most insurance companies cover both types of surgery? Yes, yes, they do. Yep. Awesome. Okay. All right, let me move over to the chat feature. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, I'll, I, mean, I, can, I can expand on that a little bit. I mean, from Medicare and patients with Medicare replacement plans and even commercial insurance, Humana United, yes, all of it is covered uh, either traditional at the hospital or at our surgery center with the robot, yes. Um, someone asked, do the doctors at Briarcrest do this? Yes. Uh, yes, I go to Briarcrest, so yes. <laughs> Um, does Methodist Germantown have this equipment yet? I'm set up for April 5th and want to do this. I have to go to the hospital. They do not. Got it. They don't have it yet, but we're actively working with them every week to see where they're at, uh, see, excuse me, see where they're at on their, you know, ordering. But we're talking to the, uh, uh, people in the company that, uh, make the robot, obviously Smith and Nephew and working with Methodist Germantown to try to get one there. Okay, someone wants to know where the incision site is. What if PT or what if the patient already has a medical incision site from a um, meniscomy? I don't know how to say that. Yeah, On the same knee. Yeah. There we go. That's a that's a good question. So a lot of people have had medial or lateral meniscectomies in the past in the 70s or 80s, and they have a big incision on the inside or outside part of their knee. We try to use that um, if we can. But normally the incision is right over the front of the knee, uh, just about two or three finger breaths from the top of the kneecap down to that bony uh, point below your knee, the tibial tubercle. It ends up being about eight or nine centimeters in length. But again, if you have other incisions that could be changed as we try to incorporate those into the current you know, knee replacement incision. All right. Um, we have a couple of questions about how long rehab is and if inpatient rehab is necessary. That's, that's great. Uh, I, some people need inpatient rehab, but it's very, very rare. Inpatient rehab in my practice is really a thing of the past. Um, most people can go home the same day from the surgery center and then do outpatient rehab starting the day after, or you know, if we do this on a Friday, the Monday after their surgery. Uh, right afterwards, you're going to be walking. You'll be on a walker or a cane temporarily for a few weeks, but we put the knee replacement in such a way that you can put full weight on it 
right away. It's not going to come apart. It's not going to come loose in your bone right away. Uh, it's not going to break. As long as you're on a walker, the likelihood of having a fall is extremely, extremely low. Um, so you can walk right away. We want you to go home because you're going to be more comfortable at home. You'll have your own food. You'll have your own bed or couch. You'll have your own blankets, you know, own TV, things like that. And uh, we ask that somebody stays with you, at least for the first few days, just to make sure that if there is a fall or a slip in the bathroom, someone's there to kind of help you get up. But you'll be able to get up on your own using your walker. You'll be able to move around uh, on your own using your walker or your cane. How long is outpatient therapy? Most people need about six weeks of outpatient therapy. First week or two, you do it two or three times a week. The next couple of weeks, once or twice a week. And then once a week thereafter, kind of we taper it off depending on how you're doing. And uh, if you need more, we order more. If you need less, you need less. Okay. Um, someone asked, where do you do this procedure and what offices do you see your patients at? I go to Briarcrest uh, uh, office and I go to South Haven. And we do these at both of our surgery centers right now. We have uh, two of the robots, actually, one up at our surgery center on Exeter, which is by Trader Joe's in Germantown, right, pretty much across the street from Methodist Germantown. And then the other robot is in the South Haven Surgery Center, which is across Airways Boulevard from uh, Baptist DeSoto. Okay. We've got several more questions. These are great, guys. Please keep sending yeah. them our way. Keep um, going. Can you do two knees at the same time? You can. You can do two knees at the same time, although it's rarer now than it is in the past. We're starting to see a lot of papers come out that show even with the healthiest of patients, the complication rate is a little bit higher. So I kind of shy away from doing both at the same time. I'd rather you do one, rehab it really well, and then six weeks or 10 weeks later, do the other one. Just so you have a chance, you give it your all on either side and you don't kind of have to, uh, you kind of don't have to uh, compensate for either one if they're done at the same time. So I, I recommend strongly you do one and then the other one. All right. Is the Cori robot also used for hip replacement? It's not, uh, not currently. There is one that's in development right now that will be coming out for hip replacements. I don't have a date when that's going to become uh, going to be coming out, but it should be sometime in the near future. Um, okay. We have a couple questions. I think we're going to need a little bit more information on. If I haven't answered your question, please send me an email at S N U C H O L S at orthosouth.org. And I will do my best to work with everyone in the organization to get you an answer to your specific question. But I think we have answered all the questions we can without additional information. Um, we'll give everyone just another couple seconds to submit any last questions. And if that's all, we will wrap up and be done for the evening. All righty. How is the pain level with the Cori robot versus a traditional knee replacement? So that's a great question. So we'll we'll take it back a little bit. Pain control after knee replacement has come a long way with technology over the past decade. Um, we are using a multimodal an uh, anesthesia protocol, different medications, injections around the knee replacement at the time of surgery, to ice machines to go home with to really help with the pain. I think, and I'm seeing a little bit less pain with the robot than compared to the traditional way. And I think the reason is, is because the components are put in more accu accurately. Your knee is moving kind of like it's been moving um, for the past couple of years, 20 years or so. It's a little bit more natural feeling. So I think the pain is less. I can't be sure the studies, would, the studies are still out on that. Uh, but as we know more, we'll let everybody know more. But I think, I think we're seeing a little bit less pain overall. And is there an age limitation as to who can have surgery done by the Cori robot? No age limitation. Excellent. Um, are there artificial knee models that are better for tennis players or other active sports? So some... <sighs> I would, to answer that question, I would say not every knee replacement is the same. And also don't be, um, uh, let's choose my words carefully. Don't be kind of fooled by things you see in advertisements and don't trust everything you see on advertisements. I think the most important thing when choosing someone to do your knee replacement is choosing someone you get along with and who you trust and trusting that they're going to use the right implant or knee replacement for you. 
Um, we can talk about that more in the office when you come see me, but um, that's, uh, that's kind of how I feel about that. After a knee replacement, can you kneel on it? Good question. You can kneel on it, but some people don't like the feeling of the knee replacement. Some surgeons will make the incision right over the front of the tibial tubercle, which is that bony piece that when you kneel on, you can feel it. My incision kind of goes just to the inside of it, so it's a little less irritating when you kneel on it. Um, I do a lot of uh, mechanics, such as those at FedEx, and uh, they say, I just got a knee pad from Home Depot, and I'm okay. I'm good to go. Um, so that's what I would suggest uh, for people that garden or do yoga or mechanics. A little soft knee pad is all you'll need. Um, there is, there is uh, no contraindication to kneeling, which means you, you, can, you can kneel on it. Okay, I think we're almost done with questions. Um, do you use local or general anesthesia? We use a little bit of well, a little bit of both and spinal. So our anesthesia protocol is that will give you kind of a spinal epidural anesthesia, which will make you numb from about the belly button down for about two hours or so. Um, and then we use local anesthesia as part of those injections that we do after we have the knee replacement in that last two or three days to get you kind of through the worst of the pain. Some people need a general anesthesia, which is where there's the tube down your throat and you breathe, uh, the machine breathes for you, but overwhelmingly greater than 95% of the time, a spinal anesthesia, you're breathing on your own, recovery is quicker, recovery is faster, you're up and going, there's no groggy feeling, no brain fog, so to speak, um, you're up and moving within a couple of hours. How many surgeries have you performed using the Cori robot? We are close to almost, I think, close to about 150 now. Awesome. We started, yeah, we started back in, started back in, oh, back in June or July of last year. Um, and uh, yeah, we've, we've, uh, I've seen, I've seen such a benefit, you know, in my story and I tell everybody, my story is I didn't think I'd see a big benefit from this. I, I wasn't sure I would like it at first, but giving it a try and talking to other people around the country and the major academic centers that use it. Um, I, we gave it, a, we gave it a go. And, uh, immediately I said, Whoa, my goodness, this is, this is showing some benefit. Um, so I, I, I kept going and, uh, now, now it's, um, it's really gotten big and I'm really become facile with it. And I'm really excited, really excited about the technology. All righty. And now what other doctors at Ortho South use the Cori robot? Uh, right now, uh, we have a few doctors that are trained on it. Um, I think we'll have to get a list from you, Melissa, on that via email. All righty. I think I've read off all the questions that we can answer without additional information. I put my email in the chat. Um, if you email me, I will, like I said, do my best to get your specific question answered. But this webinar will be up on YouTube and we will share it on our social media platforms as well as our website after tonight. And if you registered with an email, we'll send you a copy to your email too. So thank you everyone. And thank you, Dr. Wodowski. That was very informative. You're welcome. Thanks everyone for being here. I really um, hope we didn't take too much of your time and I look forward to seeing you in the office and uh, please don't hesitate to call, you know, call us or email us or come in anytime. We're always there for you. All right, everyone. Y'all have a good evening. Thank Bye -bye. you. You too.